Okay. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About It Tuesday. Um, we're glad to be with you once again. Um, we're here with another excellent topic. We're continuing from last week. I am Dr. Suzette Robinson. I am your hair loss practitioner, trichologist, specialist. I'm here for your hair needs. I'm an educator. And also we have this dynamic, dynamic panel who would take the time right now and introduce themselves to you. I introduce this panel. Go ahead panel, tell them who you are. <laughs> Hello guys, I am Dr. Pamela Hill located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I am your board certified trichologist, hair loss specialist in the Fredericksburg area, welcome. Don't All right, I'm Sh Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'm Shanae Starnes, and I am your trichology consultant. All right. And what I like to do is become your tri. I'm the trichologist to the cosmetologist. I'm located out of Charlotte. I'm building my brand, so every week I'm bringing to you who I am and who I serve and who I show up for. And I'm excited to be here with this fabulous panel as we tackle the issues at hand and come up with great solutions. All right, my name is <laughs> Carmelita Stevens. I am CEO of Hair Rehab Studio and Scout Rehab Clinic. We're located here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we are rebuilding, renewing, and restoring women to healthy hair care. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad to be here to speak to you all and to join in with my peers on the topic of discussion tonight. Beautiful. Great. And good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Rashawn Brunnix, and I'm here in the Washington, D.C. area. I am your, I guess, DMV considered uh, hair extension specialist. That is my passion, my love, everything to do with hair additions, whether you need them or you want them, I'm here to service your needs, male and female. So mm -hmm. if you happen to be looking for any type of addition, whether you need it or you just want it, I'm here in the Washington, D.C. area. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Marguerite Moulton. I'm the owner of More Hair Studios here in the Fredericksburg, Virginia area. I am your certified hair loss um, specialist. If you will um, have any problems or any issues with your hair, hair loss issues, you can give me a call. Right, right. And tonight um, we have a great facilitator that will be leading us in our discussion tonight. Please, at this time, I would like for you to like us, share our videos, and most of all, right now, if you know somebody who's experiencing any type of hair situations or just want to know, tell them we're on live now. So now you can tag your friend, your family member in at this time, and I'm going to open the floor for our facilitator, who is none other than Marguerite Moten. Take it away. <laughs> well, we'll continue on from last week, um, Tuesday at seven o'clock. We will be talking about the why it's important to know your client's medical history when dealing with your hair care needs. And um, one of the, um, one of the um, key points we're gonna be discussing on this evening is um, why is it important um, when doing chemical services mm. and, um, and, and cahoots with the medication um, the clients is, is taking and how it can affect the hair, um, the growth, and it can affect the hair um, with shedding and different things of that nature. So um, one of the things I would like to point out to you guys on this evening is that um, no matter, I think like sometimes that the clients get um, misunderstood or um, not really understanding the importance of, even though they, um, even though you guys are natural, it's still important to um, 
make sure that you get treatments and, and things of that nature and keeping your ends trim when um and you know when you're taking different types of medication how it can affect your hair growth and causes um hair loss issues um even though you're natural you think you're natural it's okay to just walk around with your hair uh, dry and your ends not trim on the six to eight weeks um period and yeah. you know just because you're natural you think that you know your medication and things of that nature don't have no uh, impact on it you know so um, just just want to let you guys know it's very important whether you're um, you're natural or you chemically um, process um, the importance and you know when you're doing dealing with chemical processes whether it's color um, perms or uh, relaxing things of that nature you know some of the medication that you may be on may have a um, a side effect that where it won't the medication that you're taking, it can kind of um, not, um, not um, what I'm trying to say, it, it, it may not go in correspondent with each other and it can cause um, damages to your hair. That's good. That's good. That's really good. And that's a, that's an important point that you're bringing out, Marguerite. I think um, because we've been talking about this topic, I think it's bring because a lot of people that I know have asked. I never associated medication, chemicals, or anything with my hair, the outcome of my hair, and um, because they don't know, they don't know. And it's very important that we explain to them the reason why. Um, I like something you said though when you were talking. I think, and you might have said this last week when you were talking about the chemicals and how people think that their hair is natural and they, you know, even with color, they think they're natural. Natural means just what it says, natural, you know, with no chemicals whatsoever in it. So, and what a lot of people fail to realize, even if you put color in your hair and you saying you natural, you're altering the way the hair is naturally supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all agree with that? Yes. And the outcome can be kind of damaging for some people. Wouldn't y'all agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I had a client today um, and, and last week who, you know, they're natural, but they're putting color in and they're having side effects from the just the color itself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's causing a lot of problems. And so being a professional, I, you know, of course, we have to go in and try to educate them, let them know, hey, this is what happened when you put this color that you got from Walmart or, uh, you know, any little store on the corner because sometimes it'd be outdated. It's just a lot we have to educate our people on, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I like this topic that you're bringing to us tonight, uh, Marguerite, because, and I can understand that it's a passion. And it's a passion where you want to really educate people mm -hmm. on this topic. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's important. And we all share the same passion when it comes to that. I just kind of wanted to add that little bit with that. Can I add something to the conversation? I think uh, when I think about the conversation that we're having tonight, we're talking about chemicals. We're talking about, you know, we're trichologists. So we see a lot of clients that either have scalp issues or hair loss. And mm -hmm. I remember back in the nineties when we weren't really into all of the naturalness, we were mm -hmm. relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I remember my client going to the dermatologist that just didn't look like her. And at that moment, she was told that maybe she needed to not where the chemical around the area where the loss was beginning to happen. Yeah, she yeah. looked at the doctor as if he had three heads because <laughs> of the yeah, yeah. Um, commitment to the chemical that we had at that time. And so I think that this conversation this is, is very good. relevant yeah. because it is great to get away from the, the, the color. You can get away from the chemicals until we address and figure out what is the cause of the hair loss? And depending upon what we discover, 
even though your hair may be going through a process, you may still be able to get color, you know, at a, at a different level um, mm -hmm. where it won't be as damaging. So I think the conversation is very relevant. I'd also like to tack on, uh, as we talk about chemicals, we also talk about the styling practices that will create hair loss, which is that traction alopecia. Mm -hmm. You know, we want the hair to be bone straight and um, we're also getting the hair braided after relaxing edges. Mm -hmm. you want the edges to look really good, but the rest might be natural or yeah. um, just that tension right here in the top from wearing your hair pulled up into the ponytail. So the conversation is very relevant. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. I hope that um, we're bringing the light to the table so that we can offer some alternatives. And the one I will say is just a shift in your mindset. Yeah. And the shift is that whatever you're coming to us for that is a concern for you and we give you the recommendation, in some cases, it's just very temporary so that we can get your hair back in a healthier state. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I wanted to share. You know, um, mm -hmm. some of these things are long lasting hair losses, but some are very temporary. Like mm -hmm. traction alopecia is the one hair loss that can be reversed if treated early enough, which, you know, some others are the same way. So wanted to add that into the conversation. That's good. And you, you know, know what? what? One else. Oh. I'll say in terms of, uh, Marguerite did bring out about medications, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that I think I most often will see or why I deem it important for um, my client to share their medical history with me because we know that different diseases and things of the body can alter the pH of the body right. along with the medications. Right. And right. so when you talk about how you're going to use, <laughs> when you talk about how we're going to apply chemicals to a client's head and we mm -hmm. don't have any knowledge of really where their pH, the body's pH is. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. we assume mm -hmm. that it's at the normal level, but we don't know if a person is dealing with any type of other treatments or what medications they're having. And then we apply this chemical and then we have, or we'll, let's just say, don't get the result that we desired, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we start wondering, well, what is it? And now we're asking questions after the fact when we really should have asked the questions ahead of time so that we knew what we were getting into. Some mm -hmm. um, of those cases where we know in advance, we can just honestly say, you know what, client, unfortunately due to you know this medication that you're taking for this issue, I would not advise that we move forward with um, you know, a chemical relaxer. Or I wouldn't advise us taking your hair color from dark, dark brown all the way up to a high lift right. blonde, right? right. right. I may have to find you something in between, something that your body or your hair could withstand, maybe a different type of, um, you know, uh, a different type of color, right. maybe not a, you know, right, yeah. maybe a, something yeah. on a temporary level or a right. demi permanent, that's something good. that's, that's very good. low that's volume good. permanent. Yeah. Um, so just having that knowledge in advance can help you make more informed decisions when it comes down to the outcomes that you're seeking, you know, when dealing with chemical services. And we know that chemicals are, um, can be very dangerous, which I, you know, that's one of the things that upsets me when I go into certain stores and I see certain chemicals available to any and every consumer yeah. that really does not have the knowledge of how to, or really Happening. they don't have the knowledge uh -huh. of the detriment that these That's right. That's can right. cause. You know, number one, we're so, we quickly say, you know, chemical relaxers are bad. They take your hair out, which that is not the claim that I make, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how to use a chemical relaxer, that's what well, it's like. mm -hmm. that a chemical relaxer is only supposed to sit on the hair for a certain amount of time. If you're not aware <laughs> that you're not supposed to overlap those mm -hmm. things, you know, then <laughs> you are funny. If you're not aware of these things, then you can have those errors that can happen. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. being aware ahead of time, I think, will totally um, can totally change your outcome because you'll make a better or more informed decision about how you're getting ready to move forward with your client. Well, that's so I also wanted to add something, and y'all probably touched on it last week. Um, even with far as 
this topic is wonderful, actually, um, because not only with medical issues, even with the scalp issues that you know we have that could be caused because of the medical issues. You know, a lot of times, you know, you have a client that has severe dandruff or folliculitis or anything to where they still want to try to get a chemical service. You know, your scalp is inflamed. <laughs> it's not time for you to actually do any type of chemical service. You need to treat that issue first before you actually put a relax or any type of chemical on it. So we, we definitely need to make known of that as well. Mm, that's good. This is really good. I just wanted to add something in. I was listening while you all were speaking and I remember um, when I was like a teenager and I went to my stylist and um, every time I went to my stylist, she would tell me, you know, I would, I would irritate or what we know, what consumers know as what we call burning. Right. So she told me, she said, you know, don't scratch and da, da, da. you know, I, I have been scratching or whatever. So the next time I would make sure that I didn't scratch mm -hmm. my scalp because I didn't want to burn, but I still burned even though I didn't scratch my scalp. So let me tell you how that works and and we all they, we all know they there I'm sharing with you all as the audience but the the panel already knows it was the pH like Dr. Rodnett uh, spoke on I didn't know then but I remember once I started school my mind went back to an incident with me that always happened because I didn't understand how I could not scratch or irritate my scalp and I was still burned. It didn't make sense. Even where, you know, basin and everything. So once I got in school, I learned about the pH. And then I realized that, and I, she did ask me about this drink that we were drinking. It was very popular then and it was red, red based, every, like just red dye, everything. It was called Very Fine Punch. I don't know if you guys remember it. You may find it at convenience stores now, but we loved it. It's similar to Hawaiian Punch, but it tastes better. And I drunk that stuff all the time. And that's what was going on. And then I learned in school about if you drink a lot of coffee. So mm -hmm. I learned about the yeah, yeah. similar. Exactly. My scout would literally, I'm talking about be on fire. Like she would have to take mm -hmm. me to the boat. And so I said all that, that story came in my mind, but I said all that to say, what if that stylist had taken about five to 10 minutes to consult with me and mm -hmm. ask me what's going on? What's anything new? Um, uh, 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 let, let's try to prevent the irritation or the you know pain that you feel when you come in to get a relaxer. Um, not 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 knocking the stylus, but you know if we think about that, a lot of the things that happen can be eliminated along mm -hmm. with me listening to her and mm -hmm. taking her advice on what to do. Well, you know the great thing about that, uh, Carmelita, is like I, I love to hear those stories because then we have an opportunity to really reflect on how far the industry has come. So we were dealing, I'll say, with stylists at the time who may not have been privy to the information that we have now, right? And so when we look back in those things and we really say, okay, you know, what if they had, you know, they really just didn't know, but thank goodness now we have so much more information. We are so much more well-informed yeah. that we can walk into these situations much more knowledgeable, better able to really assist our clients and safeguard them, right? Like you said, with a lot of things, that was one of the things that um, came to my mind was the relaxer and orange juice was like a big thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. and I always tell my clients now, please make sure you do not drink your gallon of orange juice mm -hmm. in the morning that you're coming to get your relaxer. I know you want, everybody wants their orange juice early in the morning. Everybody wants their coffee. But these are things, how about we start off with a dry morning, you just eat a little bit of fruit, come on and get your hair done, and then we'll move forward after that. Have all the coffee you want after. But, you know, it's a more, it's an informed decision um, that we can make now. So I think that's a great point that you pulled out, you know, when you say that the person you were going to some years ago, we just know that, unfortunately, we were not as adept to the information at that time. But yeah. thank goodness we are now. Yeah, and, and I, I want to say I want to say because you you guys actually is touching on basically everything that I was gonna pull out tonight um, because you know you you do you have those clients and they don't realize because they don't know the impact on um, what how the the um, 
caffeine and, and, and things of that nature plays a part on um, if they get in any kind of chemical services and um, um, and how sensitive their, their, their scalp may be in the mix of them drinking the, the um, caffeine or whatever that it, that's completely, that's really opened up their follicles. You know, and they don't realize these things. And yes, it's very important to um, um, allow the clients to know, you know, especially when they, they make an appointment, you know, they make an appointment. And then I wanted to talk about really on um, when the client doesn't really, like we talked about it multiple times when they're not being open and honest of what type of medical issues they may be dealing with and how that can impact on their outcome when we are doing chemical services. You know, and cause some, you know, what some people have already weakened and they already got dealing with certain type of um, issues and with their issues period and how it could call, it, it, it don't correspond with their chemical services. And so, um, um, I, 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 you know, I have multiple um, clients that, you know, how you have, they have this certain smell, like when they get in the chemical services, like their, their in, internal, their body has some type of, when you're doing some type of chemical services, their body has, it lets off this type of smell, smell where you know that it's something within them that's not correspond with the chemical service that they're having. And then I wanted to kind of touch on when clients, um, when they're, like Dr. Bartnett said, they're going in there and they're buying chemical, these chemicals um, and not knowing how to apply it properly. And it causes them, and not knowing that it's a, um, it might not go in cahoots with their medication or whatever illness that they are taking and it causes them to their hair to come out in that form or fashion. Okay, okay, okay. Totally agree. Well, you know what? This is, um, <clears throat> this yeah. is surely a topic that needs to be taught across the board. I think, and this is just my thought, I think that all professionals that's working with their clients, barbers, you name it. You do need to know the body, in my opinion. Because like Marguerite was saying, the body has its own chemistry, how it's made up. Mm -hmm. It has its own function. And just because I can take this, that does not mean you can take it because we're two different people. Our body chemistry is totally different. That's why I always tell uh, stylists or just people in general, even if you're doing it at home, let me just lay this out there. You really need to understand how the body functions mm -hmm. because there are times, especially with women, young girls to be exact, before they turn 13, this is why I don't recommend a relaxer for mm -hmm. a young girl because of her body chemistry. Her body is continuing to change. And they tell you that body is continuing to change. Mm -hmm. So, and because of that, there are certain things you don't need to do to their hair. Let that hair be natural. Keep it cleansed. You know what I'm saying? Come, Y'all remember? Well, I remember. I think I'm older than y'all. But my mama used to, on, Saturday, on Saturday, she had, it was like clockwork. There was going to be a shampoo, shampooing done. Well, we didn't say she it was going to be washing <laughs> and she was going to take it. She was going to put it in a little ball. She was going to freeze my scalp. She was going to put it in a little ball and let it air dry. Later on in the afternoon, then she would press it. But I'm saying that to say this, to me, there was more care for the natural hair. Now we're in this era right now my hair good example where we're trying to go natural so to speak well my hair i'm gonna use me i have a chemistry there are certain things i can't put on my hair because if i do my scalp just cuts up okay so your body is always telling you when you're putting something that does not belong there mm 
But because we like to look good, we will ignore all the signs that the body is giving us. Mm -hmm. The body is designed to talk right back to you. Mm -hmm. So being a professional, we have to learn about the body. So when people come in, we can help understand what that scalp is going through, what not to do. I like the point that y'all brought out about the relaxers. Because when I was growing up, I didn't have a relax. I was still a pressing curl all through high school. I think that's what Donnie liked about me, my pressing girl. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, when I did start getting chemicals, my scalp was like, what in the thunder is this? I was never comfortable. I always had a sensation just on one side. Nobody talked to me about it. So Carmelita, I love what you said. We do need to learn how to consult. Y'all, that's all we're saying. We're trying to bring this to the forefront. This is what professionals are supposed to do. And I'm saying to anybody that's listening, if that person who's doing your hair is not consulting with you, you may want to question yeah. why you're sitting in their chair. Because they're supposed, if you go to your doctor and he never talked to you, I don't think y'all going to sit up there and just let them just do what they want to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the same with us. It's, we're professionals. You've got to know. You've got to ask questions. Y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Almost definitely. Yeah. A lot of styles gotten away from doing consultations and yeah. I don't know why. But they actually need to continue to do it even if they got to get a loosely piece of paper or something and <laughs> ask the questions. <laughs> they, they really need to continue because like just like what Marguerite said, a lot of times clients come in and not honest with you. And yeah. you know, with us being in the profession for so long, we can really look at the head and like, okay, no, you just did such such. Well, well, I thought it was a month ago. No, it was last week. <laughs> the four weeks and that one week is a big difference. <laughs> it all you know, on the Yeah, you have to you have to talk to clients and try to pull it out of them because they're not going to volunteer and give it to you. No, no. Especially when it comes to taking medications or you know anything to do with they personal. Um, you know, life. They definitely not going to just, oh yeah, I didn't took this. No, they're not going <laughs> to give that information, you know, up openly. So, and I don't you know think what, people Pam, realize I, that. I, oh, go okay. ahead, Sinead. Just real quick. I don't think people realize that we study anatomy and physiology as a cosmetologist. And mm -hmm. so the anatomy is dealing with the body parts, the tissues, the cells, the organs, and then the physiology is the function of each and every one of those. And so when yeah. we're starting to talk about the how the drugs impact the chemical that we place on this beautiful skin, which is the largest organ of them all, this is why we keep going back to the importance of it because um, if there's a dysfunction in any of the body parts or the organs, and you're taking medications to uh, properly make that function, then there is going to be, um, in many cases, um, possibly some uh, contraindications from adding that chemical to the skin, which is the organ, right? So yeah. I just wanted to kind of tie in the little cosmetology lesson, I guess, uh, so that <laughs> the clients understand that we, we're talking about this because we go about 1,500 hours mm -hmm. you know, to study this craft. And once you get in it and get your license, that's not it. You got to go back oh. and recoup that. And let them know, no, I study anatomy and physiology. What's the name of the doctor Chemistry. that you visit? Because of, <laughs> you understand? Like, mm -hmm. let them know. And that's where your value added become sufficient enough and if it's not sufficient yeah. enough for your clients then you brand and market yourself to the clients that's gonna you know make sure that they're gonna pay you for the value added absolutely and, and another thing understand the fact these people are going to be sitting in your chair or you know and and, and listen you cannot and it's and it's gonna get it's gonna get more severe I mean, I hate to say that because we're in a situation now where people are dealing with um, stress. Um, a lot of things are going on. We're dealing with the elements in the air. We got a lot. We have to fight foods that we're eating. It's just so much that is just tearing us apart. So mm -hmm. this is not going away. It's not going to go away. Um, people are, you know, even those just educating people to let them know, hey, we're concerned about you. Right. We take the time to get educated so we can help you. We don't just do it just for the sake of the sake. 
super smart and we no, there's a there's a purpose why when like Shanae says once you complete your schooling and you out there in the salon school actually cannot prepare you for what you're going to run into at all mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. i'm just going to say that it cannot because Situations are changing. People are coming. They're not telling the truth. You got to know when somebody's sitting in your chair. Maybe these clusters of bumps. That may be shingles. It could be a lot of things that can hurt you. Mm -hmm. So this is why we begin. We have to become educated, and we have to educate the people that we come in contact with every day. Every day. And, the, and then, and then you got to look at you. I, I. <laughs> I have this one client, I'm telling you, and I think that people try to, they do things and they try to save money on their part, but they don't know the damage that they're causing. <laughs> and so I have one lady that she always, she'll come in, she want to get her hair cut and style, but I already know she comes in and she put a relaxer in her own hair and she'd be full of sores, full of sores. Sick, trying to get it bone straight. Yes, trying to get it straight, full of stores. You can't even lift her hair up from her scalp, right? Mm -hmm. So she don't realize the damage that she's causing because she's doing it and not doing it the proper way and understand the impact of just because you try to get it so bone straight, you don't realize the impact and, it's, and how it's causing damages on the other hand. Your scalp yeah. eventually, you know, you, you sitting there and the hair is stuck to your scalp, and you know, and eventually that stuff is gonna start to wear and tear, and it's gonna uh, thin it out. And then you, you know, there you go yeah. with another issue. There, <laughs> there you have another issue. Ooh, so um, it's gonna thin out. I it's mean, gonna it, break off because they overlap. Not, and not only that. It can overlap. get so bad, it can cause problems in your blood. Blood, yes. I always yes. study. It I won't always come back. You got to study a little bit further. Okay, so what? You got a sore. If you're a diabetic, if you have lupus, That's if it. you have sickle cell, oh, I can go on. If you get one sore on your mm -hmm. skin, it can be, it can be life or death. This is real, you guys. It could be life or death because you don't know what it's going to develop into because it can, you can get so bad till you have to right. go to the hospital. It can poison your blood. Oh, it can go on. And see, a lot of people don't know that. They don't know that. And they think, well, it's going to burn a little bit. It's just chemical burn. Put a little grease on. We'll be all right. Mm -mm. Really? No. no. It can like, be we are not burning no scalps here. <laughs> It could be bad. It could be bad. Over time, oh. over time, and you constantly doing it over time, like you said, getting into your bloodstream. You yeah. know, they don't realize anything that we put on our body, it gets into our blessing. Just like when we take in medication, we take in medication because the doctor's giving the medication because we may have this issue or that issue going on to get into our blood screen so it can be able to work like it needs to work, but even yeah. with taking vitamins. You know, they tell you, okay, you taking vitamins and you have to take it for X amount of days in order to get into your system, into your blood. That's the same thing with with chemicals and you know if you guys are listening if you you know you feel like um you want to take on you want to take on this responsibility of attending to your hair and this is something that you like to do why don't you you know sign up sign up for a class or something take the class if you're going to continuously try to um service you and your family your friends won't you just look for a school sign up and get educated on it you know instead of just trying to do things and not know the proper way to do it you know and causing multiple issues that you're not not realizing that you're causing you know later on in life everything don't just show right then and there it's a process why anything else it's a process yes. over time and over time it's a process dr broadnet what did you what was you going to say he was going to say something oh um the only the point that i was going to bring out was the importance of when everybody was saying you know you got to write it down 
definitely doing for us as professionals, keeping our accurate records. And then what I find is often once the client realizes that we are recording information um, and I like to have a signature. So I still use my old fashioned client card, yes, which, you know, is yes. <laughs> some people consider it obsolete, but it's quick for me to write a note and it's quick for them just to sign their name. When they figure out that they're signing to something, that they're acknowledging yes. and affirming yes. that the information that they've given you is you know correct, correct. Mm -hmm. and that they would be liable for anything that they have not said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we ask certain questions and we say hey you know are you dealing with this are you dealing with that and they say oh yeah. no not me not me and i record yeah. that and they sign right. off on it they understand that this may come back to bite them so you know That's i find it. it makes people a lot more forthcoming when they understand that you are serious about your business, you are recording the information, not so much just, you know, oh, I'm trying to write this down, I'm trying to keep this information on you. It is for a purpose. It's for mm -hmm. your safety as mm -hmm. well as mine. And so That's you it. Know, that was just that one is so I good. To bring Can out. I just read yeah. this that a, that a person wrote? Terry is a friend of mine. She wrote this. She said, Will you talk about the importance of water intake? Oh. Hair and scalp, as well as smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol, and how it impacts the hair and scalp. I told her we would. We will uh, set that in motion and definitely get some information about that and and talk about it because I I like when those that are listening to us will um, yeah we did <laughs> and also add to that drug abuse. I didn't want to bring it in because so that'll. Yeah. It's something we can so tie that, into because and then um you know let's invite somebody in and let them know hey the, you know i talked to my son is a smoker i talked to him about smoking and what it does to his, and i let him see his hair mm -hmm. and so i think talking about it is going to help so i do want to make sure we uh bring that out because she asked about it and she tunes in every week so um terry we will definitely talk about it um we will post it when we get ready to have that as a topic. Okay, I just wanted to say that, but I'm done. Dr. Broughton is waiting. <laughs> well, um, we're gonna let Marguerite um, get ready to close us out. And before I let her close out, I will thank all of our sponsors, which is Isabella Graphics, um, <clears throat> Pretty Gloss Princess, also Platinum Beauty Supply Store. And we thank you all for making sure that we're uh, able. Oh, oh, they're looking at me so ugly. And he's over there. Oh, no. <laughs> I am so sorry. I want to thank you. Well, look, I want to thank the Lord. <laughs> I want to thank him for Pastor Donnie Robinson um, and uh, Kingdom Dominion Worship Ministries which makes sure every week all our information on how you can contact us is in our in the box. So we could not do this without, he's one of our greatest uh, cheerleaders, so to speak, and he helped make things happen. And I, I would, I, I really appreciate that. So thank y'all for popping your fans and looking at me crazy. <laughs> and how to give you the neck roll. Like. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, because, you know, you can't take it for granted. We've been doing this. I think Let's Talk About It has been on for maybe going on this third year. And, but this panel has made, has taken it to another level. And for that reason, I want to thank you all each time that you come on, because you don't have to do it. But I'm very glad that you do, because we are strength in numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. I want everybody that hears me right now, please tell somebody about Let's Talk About It Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Invite them to listen. And not only listen, we have a number call in and mm -hmm. ask questions. And I just thank you, Marguerite. Um, if anyone else have anything else to say, I just want to thank all the audience that's out there and all the new stylists that's listening to us tonight. Um, um, if you have any questions, Feel free to look into the port, do the, um, oh, I'm just messing up big time. Excuse me. 
<laughs> look back and you'll find all our information in the um, chat box and um, look us up if you have any questions. Um, we be happy to answer any questions that you have. We will be tuning in next Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. And um, Dr. Suzette will have our next topic. And um, thank you once again for tuning in with us. Have a good night, everyone. And y'all, that's 6 o'clock Alabama time. So don't get on at 7 because we will be down. Okay. <laughs> oh, but thank y'all so much. Everybody say good night. 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 Good night.